we're going to be doing techniques now. And what we're going to do is work with our nib pens. And we're going to put our nibs in here. They're either called dip, dip or nib. And I'm going to put the nib in the pen. And then this is the 512. And then the crow quill, which is 107 that I'm going to be using. Okay. So one of the things I want to show you is how to fill your your nib. You do not want to go all the way down into the bottom of the bottle because then you'll get all kinds of ink up here and then you'll get it all over your fingers. So this is a really important thing to remember. You want to just go into the bottle so that you get an amount of ink. It's about there. It could go a little bit more. Whoops. And that's actually a little bit too much, but that's okay. Um, and that's good that you're seeing this. You can do this and that's fine. But you never want to get up here or up here. Also, the way I'm holding this, I'm holding it up here. I never hold it down here because if I do, then I'm going to get ink here. So, it's just one of those things because the reason is because when you put your, your, your pen in here, it could touch the sides and then you're going to get ink. So you want to keep your fingers up here. It actually is good for you to have a little bit of ease too instead of being so stiff and you can also dip in and then go like this on the the, um, the nib you want to have a pretty good amount of ink in there so what we're going to do right now is for the the 512 which I'm holding in my hand uh, we're going to do a hatch so hatch marks are just basically um, straight lines they can be curved lines. They can be diagonal lines. They can be this way also and then of course horizontal lines. So and these are used in all sorts of different kinds of applications. Um, the next one is crosshatch and <clears throat> that is the hatch. So you're picking up the hatch, and you'll notice I've got some tails here. And that's something that when you're going too quickly, you end up getting tails. And this board is picking up a little bit. I'm using Bristol, and I don't have it taped down. Anyway, the cross hatch is a hatch, and then you cross it. So it gets that, it's that simple. If I wanted to make it very, very dark and have a darker value, I can put my crop my hatch marks very close together and then you can do the cross hatch and make it darker. It not only you you can um, create value not only through using the uh, lines closer but you can actually do more marks on top of it. So your cross hatch isn't only one or one or two ways, it's many ways and I can create almost a black box here by just doing my crossing back and forth. So that's crosshatch. It's another line that we use and it's called squiggles or scribbles. It depends on who you are learning from. And the squiggle is just a, a line that's scribbly. That's basically it. So you can have it be light up on top and then say the sun is coming down here I can make this smaller or darker rather, I'm sorry by making the space smaller. And so you use that a lot. We're going to be using it today when we're doing the onion picture. The other one that we're going to use is um, the stippling. Stippling is just dots. Really, that's really the basic thing. And if it's in color, then it's called pointillism. If it's in black and white, as we're doing it, or in graphite, it's called stippling. And the closer you get to the, the each dot is, then the darker the value, and you can really get carried away with this. I actually like stippling more than a lot of other things because it's very meditative. So it's just a fabulous way to, to uh, draw. A modified stippling is you have little circles or maybe even some rectangles, and then you put your stippling in there. And you use that for texture. Um, I have a frog that I have a toad that I did. And I used a lot of circles. I used a lot of these types of things like that. 
and then put my dots in. So that's a modified type of stippling. And then you have the open C. And the open C is, um, you know, you can use this for clouds, you can use this for leaves. You could also use it for a very um, dainty flower. And so this is something, I was asked to draw this at the uh, very dainty weed at the uh, refuge in Tualatin. And I'm going, how in the world? I can do eagles. I can do a lot of other things. But how am I going to do this in pen and ink? And then I realized if I just did this with some stippling and some open seas, I've got a very delicate flower. I can come back on this and paint, and I did. I came back with it with watercolor and did a watercolor wash of green and pink. So those are the marks. So that was how, using the, um, the 512 which I'm now going to clean. I just put it, I dipped it in water and I'm going to clean it. I'm using a paper towel and um, at the end I will clean it with um, another material, probably Windex. And now I'm going to do it with the finer one, which is the crow quill. And again, that was the one that has the, uh, like a bird-like feather on the base. And so the hatch marks, you can see how delicate these lines are. And like I said, the closer you go with this, the darker the value you can be. I personally like drawing with the 107 more than anything. I, I like the delicacy. So you can do all the different directions. Of the hatch mark. The cross hatch, the same thing. It's a very delicate. And actually I should be doing it this way because the ink comes through the tine. So you have your your um, your nib and right here is this fine line and then you have a circle. This is where the ink comes out. So you basically should be drawing with it doing this way instead of this way because you get more ink. So if you don't mind I'm going to make this a little bit towards me so I can do more of the um, the proper way. And then you can also just move your pen so that your paper, your ink is going straight out of those tins, tines, sorry. Um, did I say tongues? I hope not. Um, they are called <laughs> tines. And um, this takes a little bit longer possibly with uh, fixing up or creating a darker surface with a smaller point. But this is as good as a 025 or even a 005 in your technical pen. I mean, it's just a wonderful pen. And it also holds a lot more ink than your 512. A scribble, the same thing. You've got this grip, scribble and um, it's just, like I said, very delicate. And then closer together, you can make more value. Okay. Stippling. Um, I use this pen when I'm doing colors more than anything, but again, stippling is best if you hold it just a little bit over, t uh, almost to perpendicular. You've got to be careful about putting your pen perpendicular because you're creating gravity, which may, if you have too much ink in there, it will come out in blobs. So a little bit on the side isn't too bad. Uh, you don't want to go like that because again you'll get blobs. So you've got to be a little bit careful. And again I'm holding my pen a little bit higher. And the modified C is the same thing. Uh, it's just more delicate. And I'll do it here. I'll do my circles here. And then, and then the open C. The same type of thing. And like I said you can use the open C for um, clouds too. And then do some hatch marks on that. One of the nice things about doing clouds is doing the open sea and then doing this background for the color blue. So that's always fun too. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually drawing something. So I always, 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 always um, work with pencil first. And I do the pencil and me mechanical pencil. And sometimes I do as slow as 03. You can get 05, 07, 09. And I like 03 because it's delicate, just like this pen. And I'm going to do this in this pen, but I'm going to also do some shadowing also with the other pen. So what I'm going to start out with is the sun is coming from here. So that means the light's here and the darkness is here. And I'm going to do some squiggling here. 
you know, because um, onions have that squiggle kind of thing. I actually, actually love drawing um, onions. They're really very much fun. Now I'm going to do some hatch marks, and these are going to be curved hatch marks. I'm going to do the outside outline after I've drawn all these other lines. So, notice how delicate this, this tip nib is. It's just wonderful. You notice also I'm changing the position of my pen so that it's coming out not on the side but mostly from the, the time. Now I want to have more shadow underneath here so I'm going to double up a little bit here. I'm going to use the 512 because it has a bigger dip, um, nib. See how the difference? And I can really get some shadows in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and my heavier shadows down here. And you can also use different colors too. You can get these color dinks and, and um, add color to these. And um, you can also add a little water and um, create uh, a wash. And a wash in uh, pen and ink is really nice. You can just uh, a little bit more and a little bit more here. And now I'm going to put the outside line on. That'll be a last detail. You want to always do the details last, although we're attracted to the details. Those are the ones we have to really watch to make sure that we don't start doing the details and we lose our, our way. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm going to put a little bit more value in here. And then do the squiggly lines coming out. Um, when I go to the supermarket, it's really hard to find these types of onions because they actually chop off all this. Oh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I guess the roots, part of the root structure, and they cut them off because they're not attractive. And so I have to really search for one that has a lot of roots and character. And I'm going to do a little bit of stippling here and there. And maybe a little bit more here and create some more value. And a little bit of crosshatch. I think I'm going to do a little bit of crosshatch here. Okay. Okay. So, what I'm doing next is I'm going to let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to take my my um, my pens and I'm going to clean them off with a, a paper towel or tissue. It doesn't really matter. And um, later on, I will clean these with Windex and take this one especially out because there's ink down there. So I'll take that and put it into the a bowl, one of these, and just let it soak for a little while. Don't have them soaking overnight. You don't want to get these rust very easily. Putting those aside. Okay, I want to talk about, say you make a mistake. So if you make a mistake, there's ways that you can repair it. 
and some of it is through um, you know maybe going over it a little bit and having the shadow uh, be a little bit more deeper than you wanted it. You can also use in you can also use um, white ink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this arrow here. So you can just take your ink and just fill it up. And this is to letter white. And I can overdo my line. And when that dries, I can actually draw right over it. So that's one of the ways if you get a blob in one of your paintings, or one of your drawings, I'm sorry, one of your drawings, that's one of the things that you can do. Okay, this should be dry enough. I'm going to take my eraser. Hopefully I won't smear. And so that's the method is pencil, um, ink, and then erase. And then if you want to add some watercolor wash, that's great. So there you have it. Okay. Um, here are some other examples of the same type of thing right here that I've done. And uh, these have not had, I have not erased anything from those. The same principle. I want to show you some other things that I've done, um, especially with the watercolor wash. So I'll pop this out. Here it comes. So you can take this and you can add color to it. You can do ink or you can do um, watercolor. This is a combination of both. I did the background with uh, heavy duty uh, crosshatch. And then came in here even further with that and used um, hatch, mar hatch marks to do the pumpkins themselves. You can see they curved one and this is some I cur curved also on these. And then I came in with watercolor and painted it. And then on top of that, I came back with uh, some colored inks and I also fl uh, splattered. I took my brush and went like that and got the splattering. And I really was happy with the results on this. Other art that I have here that I've done, um, this was a project that really stumped a lot of people, but it's basically cross-hatching all of these uh, values and leaving this out to stand out. Here's some pen and ink with um, corn. And then we have the, these birds, and I really enjoyed doing these birds and doing the background. It was really a lot of fun. Um, here is a pen and ink of carrots. And last but not least, um, I want to show you this um, the sheep that I did. And I ended up doing it in a painting. So one of the things that you want to do is some of the times, you know, sometimes you just want to do the, paint, the drawing first and then you can make the painting. And on the screen you'll be seeing my um, Facebook where this is located and uh, I'm also listing all the other um, contacts like website and stuff like that. So anyway, and then you can do a very simple one. And my fun, the funnest one I did was I did a, an elephant and everybody's into coloring books. So I thought this was a great alternative of doing, instead of doing a, a lifelike elephant, doing the elephant and then drawing all these lines. And this would be a great gift for kids or even some adults because there's so much adult um, uh, coloring right now so you can make your own. So I think that covers everything. Um, I hope you've learned some things and uh, let me know if you need anything more and some more instruction. Until next time, thank you.